Imagine this. The deceased began rising from their graves and they start attacking the living, destroying civilization and ending life as we know it. So, your hometown is now in ruin and there are flesh-eating reanimated corpses everywhere. This little scenario is called the Zombie Apocalypse. The Zombie Apocalypse is nothing new. It's been explored countless times in movies, books, video games, and even creepypastas. But, this is also work of fiction. I mean, zombies can't actually exist, right? Well, what if I told you that the threat of a zombie apocalypse is more real than you may think? Sure, it's impossible to reanimate the dead since you can't make your organs just start functioning again, but that doesn't mean that zombies can't exist. Let's look at a few possibilities. There are a few drugs that can potentially turn you into a zombie. For example, bath salts. It's been a common urban legend for a while that bath salts can potentially make you think you're a zombie. Just look at the Miami bath salts guy who we'll get back into in a little bit. Now an army of crazed bath salts addicts would be scary and would kill potentially thousands of people. But it wouldn't exactly be world ending. For one, bath salts addicts can't infect you the same way zombies can. And secondly, this can be easily avoided. Just don't use bath salts and stay away from people who do use them. Plus, it was later revealed the Miami bath salts guy wasn't even on bath salts to begin with. And other than him, I was unable to find any evidence that claims that bath salts can turn you into a zombie. And as previously mentioned, a bath salts addict can affect you. But you know what can? Viruses. The three culprits we need to look at are Toxoplasma gondii, Cordyceps, and Rabies. Let's talk about Toxoplasma gondii first. Now, rats and mice are both prey to cats. As such, they try to avoid cats as much as possible. Now, here's where Toxoplasma gondii comes into play. Toxoplasma gondii is excreted through cat feces and urine. It affects the rat and manipulates its way of thinking, causing it to seek out cats rather than running from them. The rat gets eaten, Toxoplasma gondii breeds, and the cycle repeats. And there are reports of Toxoplasma gondii infecting humans as well. And while there aren't any negative effects it has on humans at the moment, unless you're pregnant of course, who's to say that it can't manipulate your way of thinking and cause you to just become a mindless husk? A mere shell of your former self. Now let's examine Cordyceps. Now Cordyceps isn't a virus, it's a fungus. But it can manipulate the way the host thinks the same way the previous culprit can. Cordyceps mainly targets ants. It makes its way into the ant's brain and controls its every movement, effectively turning it into a zombie. The ant finds a place to die and the cordyceps begins to grow out of the ant's head and release spores into the air to infect more ants. And they don't exclusively attack ants. They also go after other arthropods as well, such as spiders, beetles, caterpillars, etc. Hell, they even infect Pokemon. Luckily, cordyceps can infect humans. In fact, in some places, it's even considered a delicacy. But how do we know it won't mutate? This has happened before. In fact, viruses and other organisms can mutate all the time. Just look at typhus. It originally had to infect rat fleas and then rats in order to infect humans. But after a while, typhus learned a new way to infect humans by going directly to the body lice. This allowed it to effectively go after humans directly. And it's not like we can't get infected by diseases that we were previously immune to. Just look at measles, which originated from cows. Believe it or not, humans actually used to be immune to measles. But after years and years of being in close proximity to cows who were infected, they began to adapt and mutate in order to infect humans. And just look at HIV, which originated from chimpanzees. There are plenty of viruses that humans were originally immune to, but after years of being in close proximity, they mutated and were able to infect humans. And who's to say Cordyceps won't be added to that list? The game The Last of Us explores what it would be like if that ever happens. And if their depiction is accurate, that's the last situation I'd ever want to be caught up in. And lastly, we have our most aggressive culprit, Rabies. Unlike the last two contenders, Rabies can actually infect humans. And it's the closest we've ever discovered so far to a real-life zombie virus. It even spreads the same way, through a bite or scratch. Once Rabies finds a host, it'll start affecting the host's behavior, making it become more aggressive. Hosts can range from a variety of different animals such as dogs, cats, bats, rodents, raccoons, and yes, even humans. The scariest part about rabies is that there's no cure, and once symptoms start showing, it's already too late. And while it is preventable with the help of a vaccine, if rabies mutates and renders the vaccine useless, we're in for a world of hurt. A Spanish movie called Rex shows what could possibly happen if rabies mutates, and the end result isn't pretty. So in my opinion, if a zombie outbreak were to happen, the cause would most likely be rabies. But all is not lost, however. 
In part 2, I will discuss ways to survive a zombie outbreak, the link to which will be in the description below. Time to go get ice cream now.